What's up everybody? Welcome back to another IoT hacking video. This is Matt Brown and today we are taking another look at this sketchy Chinese 4G GPS tracker that I bought off of Amazon. And today we're going to read some of the digital signals coming off of the GPS module itself. So uh, without further ado, let's go over to the workbench and take a look at this device. So. Uh, here is my GPS tracker. As I mentioned in some of my other videos, I have uh, kind of separated the battery off uh, from the main device. This is mainly so I can power off the device whenever I want to because it doesn't have an actual on off switch on the device itself. Also because the terrible solder job by the original manufacturer of this device uh, made it so that uh, the battery kept uh, coming on, disconnected. And so today what we're gonna look at is actually down here in the lower left-hand corner, and that is the GPS module on this tracker device itself. So we are going to switch over to our microscope cam to take a closer look at this device. And so here we're just going to center and try to focus in on our GPS module. So right here, we have that GPS module in view, and I'm going to use a flashlight to try to make uh, that visible. There we go. So you can see that this is a Quicktel L76K. And so we can use this to go over to our computer really quick and we can check out the data sheet of this GPS module. So what we see when we look through this module uh, is some very helpful information. So the first thing I'm always going to be interested in in a data sheet like this is the pin assignment. So here we have a very nice diagram of the pinouts on this chip. And so we can see that right here, we have up, up at pin one, we have ground, and then we have a TX pin. Now this is gonna be the pin that we are going to be targeting today and trying to read the digital signals that are coming out of that TX pin. Um, definitely some interesting stuff in the other one. We could also send serial data to this device. Um, this data sheet actually describes how you can push new firmware to this GPS chip. You can reconfigure it. You can tell it, you can actually configure this chip which, uh, sat, which uh, global positioning systems to use. So there is the GPS system, which is obviously the American system, but this chip can interface with a wide variety of the uh, Chinese, Russian, EU-based systems out there, and uh, which is also uh, pretty interesting when you start looking at the data from this chip in its default configuration. So, uh, so that was the pin assignment. So that tells us that this pin number two is what we want to target because that's that's again that serial data where where that's going to be transmitted. But what kind of data is going to be transmitted over that pin? Well, this data sheet documents that very well. Down in the application interfaces section, uh, we can go here and look at IO pins and communication interfaces, and then the UR interface is specifically what we are interested in. So here, uh, when we look at this UR interface, it gives us a bunch of really useful information that we're gonna use in our next steps of decoding the data coming off of here. So. It tells us it's supported baud rates, but it tells us the default settings, right? And, and nine times out of 10, uh, whoever manufactures a device like this is not gonna reconfigure the chip to use some different settings. And so we're going to find that the default settings are, are 9,600 baud, eight bits. Okay, that's standard. No parity bit. So that is going to be kind of a non-default kind of uh, setting. And so, yeah, no, no parity bits and one stop bit. And so we are going to take these settings and use those later when we're, when we're decoding our signal. Um, and then the interesting, oh yeah, and then the other really important thing is it actually tells us what the protocol 
what the output protocol is. So it's this, it's this uh, NEMA. I don't know if that's how uh, people in the GPS game pronounce this, but this is a data format standard for positioning data. That is really cool. And so we are going to uh, get back to that in a little bit, but I'm going to pull up the Wikipedia page for that protocol and we're gonna, we're gonna get ready. And, and see here, you can actually see the, the typical default UART settings here, same values, right? Uh, 9,600 baud, eight bits, no par no no parity bit, um, all really useful stuff. So now we're gonna go back to our microscope and we're going to connect up our our uh, logic analyzer. Actually, first let's just uh, look at the workbench and I'll show you the logic analyzer setup that I have. So here is my super cheap $15 logic analyzer knockoff of a Sally. And uh, I have uh, ground and a, uh, this green wire. This green wire is plugged into channel one, not channel zero, because this cheap piece of crap sometimes fails and craps out on channel zero. So that's why we're doing that today. So um, I've got these connected up to these PC byte probes, which are just probes that have a, uh, like a needle on, a po on pogo pins on the end and allow me to connect up to things on this board uh, without soldering, which is kind of nice sometimes. So we'll go back under the microscope. We don't need to read stuff anymore, so we'll just use my microscope light. We're gonna reposition a little bit. All right, so there is our GPS chip. And remember, pin number two is what we are going to target with our probe here. So see, so you can see here how this needle works. So it, it has some spring to it, which is nice. So you can just set it on the pad you wanna to connect to. Now, something really interesting here. So we have this hole up at the top of the board. So that is a pin one indicator. Uh, all chips are gonna have some kind of a circle, some kind of a, an arrow somewhere that's gonna tell you where pin one is. And so we have found it right here. And then I'm gonna zoom in because this board actually gives us a really uh, a nice and easy way to connect up to that pin two. So here we've got a little bit closer look and we can actually see that pin two here, you can kind of see the circuit board, how it's connected over to this pad on the side. And the same thing with pin three, which was that RX pin. And so here they are labeled. So, it's, so here it's called GTX and GRX. I'm guessing the G stands for GPS and then TX and RX obviously are transmit and receive. So all I have to do, so we're gonna, we're gonna zoom out because we don't need to be that close for connecting up to this. So I'm going to just place my pin right there and getting these to stand up. The hardest part about this under a microscope is getting these pogo pins to, to stay where you want them to. They're pretty easy to use when you're not doing them under micro microscope. So that is connected up to the transmit pin. And now all we have to do is get our ground line connected to something that is connected to ground. And so the easiest thing to do is actually gonna be just to connect it to the top of this metal casing, the metal shield on top of our GPS module. And now if we go back to our computer, we should be able to start pulling some of this data. So the, the, the GPS module, the, the whole GPS tracker is, it's turned on and we can now see that data. So I'm using PulseView here. It is an open source uh, program that, that you can feed in data from your logic analyzer and try to make sense of it, right? So I'm going to, I, I always set my, my, my samples at about 1 million samples per second. Um, this device claims that it supports way higher than that, but if I start going up any higher than that, it will, it will fail randomly. And then, oh, excuse me, sorry. The number of, this is like the number of total samples. Sorry, I'm gonna do one megahertz, 1 million samples per second. So, um, and then we're gonna hit run. And then we're going to see blocks of data 
nicely coming across that transmit pin of our GPS module. So now I'm going to have to very carefully, uh, okay, so we're going we're gonna to stop and we're going to go take a look at this. Uh, all right, so I'm going to zoom in here. Why am I being so careful? And the reason is because I have to be a little bit careful because I'm not giving you weirdos my GPS location. So we're just going to try to look at the beginning of our signal. All right, I'm going to very carefully zoom out. Okay, here we go. We have the first spot of our data. Okay, so that the, the, I, I can show you the first little bit of this protocol, and, and we'll, uh, we'll explain why here. We'll see why when we try to decode it. So now that I see the beginning of one of these transmissions, these data transmissions, from the GPS module, I can go here and click to add a decoder. And then I'm just going to search for UART. And so then it's going to pop up this decoder down here at the bottom of the software. So I'm going to click that and then I could name it whatever I want. I don't really care about that. Um, and then the, and then I have to set which line is the RX and, and the TX. TX we don't care about. We're going to set the RX to D1. That's that channel one on my device. And then I need to set the baud rate, which we found in the documentation for both the GPS, uh, the data sheet of our GPS chip, as well as the default in that Wikipedia page on these types of systems, which is really cool. Then I have to set the parity to none. I already had that, I already had that set up. Um, and then data bits, eight, uh, stop bits, one. I believe that is Correct. Let's go back and check. Uh, stop bits one. Yep, that we are correct there. And so now we can start to decode this data. Oh, okay. So right now it's by default in Pulse View, it picks hex to, to be the, the data type that it's going to decode into. But we can actually select ASCII. And if it's not an ASCII character, it'll just fall back and show you in brackets what the hex character is anyway. So this is super nice. And so here we see, okay, so this is not the sensitive part yet. I can show you guys this until we uh, show you some mock data. So we see dollar sign G N G G A. Okay, so this is really cool because now we can go to that Wikipedia page and we can start to see, to, to see how this matches up with this message structure, right? So. Here is an example of a, a message, right? It's always going to start with, uh, well, well, some of them will be start with an exclamation point. This chip, they, they all start with a dollar sign. And then there's this kind of first section um, where it's going to tell us what kind of data, what kind of uh, data it's, it's, it's uh, talking about in a given message and where it came from, which is pretty cool. So. Again, uh, we'll try to switch back and forth real quick. Okay, so the, it starts with G N G G A. So the G N. Okay, so that is supposed to be like where it's from, and I don't understand what why it's saying G N. But we're gonna find some data that makes more sense. But the G G A is telling us that it is global positioning system fixed data. So uh, the first the first two characters is supposed to tell you like which positioning system it is getting this data from. So you can see the the BD and the and the GB are coming from Beidou, which is the Chinese positioning system. We have the Galileo system, which is this is like the EU RAN positioning system, and you have GPS, America, 
and uh, you have the Russians. So, so everybody has to have their own positioning system, obviously, because uh, you, in, in wartime, you can't trust each other uh, to rely on their systems, right? Um, so this is really interesting. So we can see where we're getting this positioning data from. So I told you, like, like I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna give you guys my location data here, but uh, from a different location, uh, you guys can all, you, you'll, you'll be able to see in a minute where I took this from. So I have a video prepared of me, me, me doing this same data collection process from a different location. Um, oh, but first, but first, we are going to talk about a Python script that will pull in and decode this data for us. So Pulse View is that graphical user interface that interacts with the underlying SIGROC program. SIGROC is this underlying tool that is pulling in data from all of these different logic analyzers, decoding it, and able to uh, do different searches and different uh, decodes on that data. And so here, using this inside of a Python script, I'm actually able to automatically uh, parse and decode all of the raw data coming off of my logic analyzer. So here, I'm basically running this command so SIGROC CLI, uh, the output mode is hex, um, and then it's using this specific driver. I'm setting the sample rate, uh, which is the same sample rate that, that um, it's about the same sample rate that we set in the GUI software. And then here is the interesting part. So here I can define my decoder, my protocol decoder. And so I can say, I wanna, I wanna set up a UART interface that has a receive line at D1. I can set the baud rate. And so, uh, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that basically like outputs this data in JSON. So I'm going to upload this script to GitHub and have a link down in the, vid in the video description so you too can have this script that, uh, I'm not gonna go over all this Python code, but basically what it does is it takes all the hex data that this CLI tool is spitting out to the screen and it parses only the important parts and then it decodes that back into text and then I get output that looks like this. But I'm gonna show you this live right here. So in this video, I'm running the Python script and you can see how it's, it's slowly, it like in chunks, it is outputting this data here. Um, and you can see all sorts of these different codes which we will go over in a little bit. So I have all that same data that's right here. Now the cool thing about this is that you can just copy one of these lines and so again we have this uh, NMEA so so we can say like we can just search for this and say parser and there's like this tool here which we can just paste our data into. Let's make sure that's the video. Okay, so here we go. Let's 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 try out this first one here. So let's paste in this line that we got out of our logic analysis software. Okay, so it turns out that the GPS data I attempted to collect at an offsite location was complete garbage. So we are going to simulate what good GPS data actually would look like. So for that, I've got this, uh, this tool here. And so I can generate the, the data in that, uh, that, uh, that NEMA format that uh, is being output by the digital signals on our GPS module. We just did not get a good data read. Uh, so I'm going to simulate what that good data would be like. Um, I'm gonna put a point down here and then I'm going to, oh, what the heck, okay. I'm going to say generate this NEMA file and uh, it will download one. I have another one right here of pretty much uh, the same location. And so I'm going to take this data. Again, this is really similar data that you saw coming out of our logic analyzer that we were able to decode. So, um, we're gonna go and we're going to enter it into this tool online. And then you can see that it is parsing all this data and it is able to parse that 
latitude and longitude data and it can actually map it out and confirm that it did come uh, from Iceland, which is where we generated our fake data from. So um, there you can see that we are actually able to get data out of this module just for whatever reason uh, when I took that data capture. It did not want to do uh, to actually give us location data. So um, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.